you're good at you're good at simplifying things bro so i want to ask you a question what does christ consciousness mean to you and how does that relate back to everything that we've been talking about today with law of one non-duality positive negative the whole nine how does how does it how does it fit into the picture yeah christ consciousness is kind of one of those buzzwords in the spiritual community but i but it has a real meaning and I think it's helpful for us to know what it means. And uh, if we're using a law of one lens, then Christ consciousness would be synonymous with fourth density consciousness or uh, the open heart chakra at 500. Uh, It's the awareness of oneness. And I think we call it Christ consciousness because Jesus, the man, uh, discovered Christ, the consciousness within himself. And if you do the muscle test and you calibrate Jesus's level of consciousness, when he lived, he calibrated at a thousand, like the Buddha and very few other, um, they call them avatars, people who calibrate at a thousand. This is the highest level of consciousness a human body is capable of sustaining. Mm. And so Christ consciousness is the awareness that what I am has never left my source, uh, that I am, I am an extension of that one energy that one that oneness of the universe i am that oneness and we see that reflected in the way that christ would speak and teach was he was so realized almost to his own detriment right that he couldn't speak from any other plane of identity Mm. he couldn't speak as a man and say me jesus the guy who was born in this day i think this and i feel this you know he had annihilated that sense of self which is why one of his main qualifications to being his disciple when people would ask him was like lord well how do we become your disciple and he would say die to yourself it's like die to my well i can't follow you if i die right it's like no i'm not talking about your body i'm talking about die to the self you think you are this separate entity right so christ consciousness is the awareness of my oneness with my creator as jesus said i and the father are one Uh, If you've seen me, you've seen the father Christianity or the religion Christianity makes the mistake of believing that Jesus was speaking exclusively, right? He was, he was claiming something that was only for himself. And the rest of you can just like worship me because I had this one thing figured out that you don't get access to, but that's not what Christ was saying. And in fact, Christ, as you know, never said to worship him never called himself a savior, never told anyone to confess him as Lord. In fact, he went around announcing to people that their sins were forgiven already. And he said, he would tell people as I am, be as I am. Uh, John 17, I pray you all would be one with the father, just as he and I are one. I pray you would all realize this oneness. So it's a level of awareness we access in our consciousness through. um, And I think these are the two most important things, Jesse, for me through self-investigation number one Mm -hmm. which is kind of that introspection we've talked about today of look inside myself really ask really dig really want to know is there a part of me that still is jealous or resentful or prideful and let me see that fully and completely and forgive it because as we said it's not a thing in and of itself that can even be judged it's just the ignorance of reality Mm -hmm. it's just the ignorance of love And so once I know love as the supreme reality, I just lose the ability to be arrogant. I just lose the ability to be greedy or selfish because that awareness is is a level of consciousness that commands a certain behavior from you. So you you just find yourself being lived by love, right? It's automatic. It's not something you think about or process. I mean, that's Christ consciousness is it just, it flows through you when it's integrated. And so that's why I come back to saying, Yes, I believe that everyone, oh, I didn't go my second point, (laughs) self-investigation and um, cultivation of inner silence. Mm. To me, those those two have been the biggest transformations in my consciousness is by pursuing those two. Mm. So meditation is it plays a huge role in that. But that the, the two go together, right? Because once I have a foundation of inner silence, I mean, that that is the natural state of who we are, of what we are is it's silence and repose. It's perfect equanimity. So when you find that place in you, that's perfectly still and silent, it doesn't have an opinion, doesn't have a judgment. It's perfectly at peace with reality. 
you find that part of you and it begins to light the way to all your shadows. It begins showing you whatever doesn't match up with that perfect peace and stillness in you becomes very obvious, right? Once your mind is more quiet, the part of you that is greedy or selfish is like a bullhorn ringing in your mind. And you're like, man, I've got to, I've got to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I can't, it becomes insufferable to live with these forceful states of consciousness anymore. Mm -hmm. And so silence and introspection will lead you to this Christ consciousness where you be truly become aware of oneness, not as an idea, not as something you give lip service to, but as a real waking awareness of your everyday life that you can't unsee it anymore. You see yourself as joined with everyone so mm -hmm. that to even, you know, to take one penny away from someone would, would hurt you inside because mm -hmm. it's like doing it to yourself. Right. And so Jesus would talk like this. If you didn't visit the prisoner, if you didn't take in the widow and the orphan, if you didn't feed the hungry, you didn't do it to me. And they're like, Jesus, come on, man. That's pretty harsh. When have we ever seen you hungry? We would have, we would have for sure fed you. And Jesus was saying, no, because what I am is not this body, right? What I am is everywhere, is everything. And if you knew me, you would see me in everyone. Mm. That's Christ consciousness. So we can, we can develop that awareness, Jesse, each one of us, through our own spiritual practice to where we don't even need to go out into the world. <clears throat> and yes, I believe everyone has a divine purpose and potential to express their unique gifting in the world and create value in the world that is you know, exponential and brings unity. But if you couldn't leave your house, right? If you were locked indoors as we are these days, mm. you could still make profound, dramatic changes to the world without even leaving your house, mm. just through the expansion of your own consciousness. Mm. Powerful, bro. Powerful, man. And when we go back into the prophecies you know the return of the christ i actually wrote a song called the return of the christ it's a powerful song and i'm excited to release it and it's i can't wait man it's a conversation between my hood version of me when i was raised in the hood and <laughs> christ and it was like it's this powerful conversation but i got the idea of that song from the prophecy you know christ is going to come back one day a lot of people think it's the the man is going to like come back down and to, and to save us and I feel like this is like the, the it's it's not the return of the man, it's the return of the consciousness, and it's the return of the realization, or should I say, the remembrance that yeah. we are that, and that's what I feel like is happening. And it's I feel like we're in the early stages in the sense that we've got a lot of. Uh, duality to transcend first <laughs> as a collective yes. Put as, it a lightly. Coll as a yeah. collective but i feel like there's key people that and key souls that are, have been on you know perhaps uh journeys through time and space to mm -hmm. get to this timeline now to get to this reality perhaps some of you are watching this or listening to this right now where this makes sense to you and this resonates with you and, and you feel yeah. it in your soul and you feel like wait a second these guys are saying something that I feel within myself. And I feel like that's so powerful, bro. Because when, you, when you're when going mm -hmm. back to the power versus force ratios, the one to 10 million or whatever it was, uh, you know, if that is the case, which makes sense to me, then, then for those of us that do, you know, are called into or, or have arrived at this realization or this remembrance that, we are all one, which is what we've been talking about this entire unity summit. Mm -hmm. We are all one. And then we start implementing those, those practices of you know, internalization, going within the self, doing that inner work, doing that healing work within the self, you know, confronting the shadows, the things that we've been talking about, confronting the, the negative polarity within the self, harmonizing that, accepting that, loving that, you know, coming to that peace within ourselves, elevating our consciousness obviously we're going to have a ripple effect to the world around us without us even needing to actually really do anything mm -hmm. and if we can apply that with those keys that i was sharing from my story around the courage and the strength and the faith and if you can apply those three things then everything will be looked after and you'll be protected and you'll be guided and and you know you'll you'll be granted safe passage to the next next 
step or next chapter of your journey, then I feel like that's probably one of the most powerful ways that we can contribute to what's mm -hmm. going on in the world. And, and I feel like when we can apply those lessons, then everything that we need for our own individual mission, because like you said, we all have our own individual journey and mission and potential and and you know when we start going into like the ascended master teachings which i've just been fascinated for i you know you learn about you know jesus and buddha and all of the other avatars or ascended masters mm -hmm. that have walked this planet one of the key one of the key um recurring themes mm -hmm. within all of these stories is that they had like a specific a specific mission and they had to go through a specific journey and right. that journey was filled with highs and lows and initiations and expensive uh, evolutionary processes. But it's through that personal journey. It's through that personal story that they arrive at that, at that, at that, at that remembrance of oneness, at that remembrance yeah. of unity, at the remembrance of Christ, if you want to use that word. And, and that's again, how we can, how we can make that, that shift and when we look to the ascended masters when we look to the jesus when we look to the the buddha when we look to the other you know the other ascended masters we look at the you know I, it makes so much sense what you're talking about that ratio because we're looking like thousands you know a couple of thousand years in the future and there's still an impact from his his, his embodiment you know whether you yeah. no matter what indoctrination and distorted teachings you picked up the the impact is there because we're still talking about it. <laughs> that's the fact. Right, exactly. You know? So if that's if that potential lies within all of us, which is kind of like the message that I like to drive home with people is that it's within you. You know, yeah. we all we this is what we all are. This is what he was teaching us. Let's learn how to practice that. Let's learn how to embody that. Um, and you know, walk that path for those of us that do feel called towards that. I guess my final question for you, brother, before we close this off, because we're a little bit over time now, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> is how how do we begin you know what's something that you with the listeners can take away to begin practicing that in their life on a practical level you know perhaps today or this week what what can people start practicing to really start coming to that remembrance within themselves not not just so it's an idea that we've shared with them but it's a real mm -hmm. a real experience they feel well you touch on so many good things man when it comes to christ there's so many archetypal themes in the Christ story that translate to each one of us. And that, like you said, that potential exists within all of us. So whether you were born a Hindu and you worshiped Krishna or a Buddhist and Buddha was what you worshiped or a Christian in Christ, you know, these avatars, like understand that those avatars exist within you in potential. And it's like, don't just don't just worship the external figure as something far away from you, but find the Christ within yourself, find the Buddha within yourself and let the Christ be made manifest through you. That's the greatest act of worship any of us can do. Right. And so we see in the Christ story that Christ was the savior of the world who came to forgive humanity for their sins. Right. And where's that true in me? If I do the work on myself, the forgiveness work, I forgive myself for all of my sins. I forgive myself for all of my mistakes and shortcomings. And then in turn, if, I, if it's true forgiveness, then I forgive everyone else in my life too. Mm. Then I become the Christ. I ascend to the level of love at 500 or Christ consciousness, where love is now the guiding barometer for my life. And so I literally become the savior of the world. Because when I become love, whoever meets me has an encounter with love and gets to experience the frequency of love, maybe for the first time, who knows? Mm. But even beyond that, right, to be, to be the savior of the world doesn't mean <clears throat> you save the world from each individual person from their sufferings or whatever. It means that each one of us has created a fake world in our mind that we've projected with all of our biases and our prejudices and our judgments and our arrogance. And we, we see the world with that filter, right? And that's why forgiveness as a course of miracles teaches is the path to salvation because we are literally saving the world from us, right? The world doesn't need to be saved by you. It needs to be saved from you. Mm. 
mm. from all of your judgments about it. And when I see a forgiven world, when I lose the ability to judge, you know, evildoers and, and whatnot, when I see the world that way, I have elevated my frequency to that 500 or above level where I'm, I'm literally making waves in the collective consciousness by myself, mm. one person. Like I said, I don't even need to leave my living room to do that. So forgiveness, I think, is the fastest path to the heart chakra, you know, to, to open the heart chakra because the heart can't channel energies of judgment and separation. So if I have judgments about other people, if I see anyone as separate from me, my heart has to close to that perception. Mm. So my heart will remain open when it has perfect forgiveness and I see an innocent world, right? Which doesn't mean I don't still seek to alleviate suffering and speak truth to injustice and whatnot. But it means I do it from a place of love where I'm no longer holding those trespasses against people. Mm. And if, I've, if I can do that, I have become the Christ, which means Christ is now, like Paul said, Christ lives through me or AKA love lives through me. And that's the highest act of worship to the creator that anyone can undertake. Mm. Powerful, bro. Powerful. 